Hi and welcome. I'm Tommy Holst, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Release Edition. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMakeOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. Today we will talk about the usual suspect in terms of galleries and take a closer look at the crazy for cult exhibition by Gallery 1988 with Ralston Designs Back to the Future Skateboard Deck Triptych which is an awesome piece and a great concept for Back to the Future the movies. And you better stay tuned or head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with the art we are talking about or check us out on YouTube for the video version. So let's jump in right away. I'm going to talk about uh, first the Lost Lost Angeles print by Rome Couch, which is not per se a movie print in that regard. It's more about the cityscape, but it has to do with movies, of course, and has some very cool details in it. But the crazy part is this is a 36 color hand pull screen print. 36. I said it again. This must be hard work for the printers in that regard. Um, this is a signed and hand numbered edition of 100. Uh, the size is 36 by 16.5 inches and it has a certificate of authentication. And Botlack came out with this one. They teamed up with Rome Couch a couple times before and there will definitely be more in the future. The next one I want to talk about is a Tots Slater print also released by Bottleneck. It's the I have, I have Spoken, which is pretty easy to guess since it's on the bottom of the print and it is quill from the mandalorian tv show and his signature sentence is i have spoken this is a cream uh, screen print 12 by 12 inches hand number edition of 125 i think the other ones are also 125 uh, in numbers but i'm not sure uh, this one is basically is a variant kind of a fine gold edition then we have the jupiter edition uh, the next one is the Neptune edition. My favorite of all of these is this one, the Onyx edition. The colors make it make it pop, um, especially here. And the last one is the Fairway edition of this print. I like it so much because it the the, the portrait itself is fitting to the character, and the colors are very um, very well picked, and the brushes that were used look also really cool. So. Definitely a very cool piece and the size also speaks for it so you can put it anywhere you want to. But Bottleneck has also a showstopper which I presented before in the story of uh, the Instagram page. This is the Dark Knight 3D lenticular print. It's a, this, this one here uh, or the, the regular edition was a timed edition which was one millimeter PET mounted on high density paper backing 24 by 36 inches. Also a certificate and even the BNG hologram of, of authenticity is on there. So very cool print. And uh, yeah, it's very fitting with a Joker on there. And um, I think a lot of people bought this one. Uh, I saw already a couple on eBay for the timed edition even, which is crazy. <laughs> and order numbers up. So they got deleted right away. And um, yeah, uh, I hope you guys uh, grab one. I mean, the 2001 Space Odyssey Lenticus Day came out great. I saw a couple pictures from people getting it already. And uh, yeah, I hope they keep coming up with some more lenticulars. I mean, there definitely will be probably more. Uh, the variant of this one is the lenticular plex one. It's four millimeter polystyrene. It's also 24 36 inches, and it had it wasn't a timed edition, it was a limited edition of 550 pieces. Okay, this was it for uh, this week for Bottleneck, and we're gonna move over to Mondo, and they came up with Marvel Avengers original video game soundtrack LP by with the music by Bobby Tahuri. The artwork is by Phantom City Creative, and it looks amazing with those fists on on top of there. That's that's very cool. But they also put a 180 gram tricolored vinyl on there, which is this little piece, and this looks also very cool. Uh, in terms of colors and here is the whole set with the with the cover sheet and uh, uh, the inside how it looks on the inside in terms of when you open up the vinyl oh, yeah Phantom City Creative 
not a stranger to soundtracks and they did a great job on this one and uh, this is not all the Phantom City Creative we have today there's also this Moon of the Wolf print for the Batman the Animated Series which is in a uh, kind of like darkish colors with the moon and the bat signal in there and it has um, it has like a fitting tone in terms of like when it comes to the night but uh, this one this is a 80 by 24 inch print it is a edition of 225 and then there's also the variant uh, which has more like the this bat colors with the with the typical bat yellow in there and uh, in contrast I think it's a, it's a good contrast the yellow and the black of the wolf and uh, you will find it also again in the eyes the yellow so very cool uh, variant and um, but I think I have to go with the regular on this one and the variant is available 124 times but Phantom City Creative not a stranger to the Batman series they did a lot of stuff on there there's some more stuff coming soon so check that out as well uh, great job Phantom City Creative um, the next one is also on the last print by Mondo it is the rope print for Alfred Hitchcock's movie I sadly did not see the whole movie I saw just a couple scenes and this one is uh, supposedly like or has this one shot look and it's a it's, it sounds like a great movie in terms of technical achievement there and um, yeah this one is the print is by we buy your kids WBYK uh, we had them on before and they do always great work and have the signature style. And I think it comes through on this print and the idea and the concept of it is also really cool. And this is also 18 by 24 and an edition of 200. So this is it for the big uh, galleries like Bottleneck and Mondo. And this one here is by Brent Woodside. It's called Loyalty. It's a Soka piece. And it's a lithograph print and the edition size is 395. And the actual size of this one is 18 by 24 inches. Great piece, especially with the background of the clone troopers in there and the helmet, which is important for Clone Wars Season 7. So if you haven't seen that, it's definitely a must watch. And Ahsoka is such a great character. One of my favorites, definitely, even in the whole Star Wars universe. Now moving on over to Vice Press and they came up uh, with this beautiful Flash Gordon Prince. Um, they have been, uh, for, or you, you could get them, I, th I think it's a, like a folded print in that regard. Um, uh, with the Blu-ray or the, the 4K uh, remastered Blu-ray edition. And uh, yeah, Matt Ferguson did this one. It looks amazing. We talked about this before. This um, this version it was available. The portrait version was available 100 times and had an A2 size, which translate to 16.5 times 23.4 inches. It is hand numbered offset lithograph print on 300 grams acid free paper. And then Matt also um, had this piece going, and this is the landscape version of it and this is on gold foil the edition is 195 and the size is 36 by 24 inches it's also hand numbered offset and a, lith a lithograph print on 300 gram miri board paper and yeah matt knocked it out of the park with this one so definitely cannot argue with this um there's also the last one is um, a similar version but not on gold foil it's a regular print basically it's also litho lithograph print and acid free paper edition of 150 and uh, it just looks amazing I mean Flash Gordon is such a cool and colorful movie and I really 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 like it um, but if you have if you also have another like also, also a big Flash Gordon fan check out the animal pins that uh, Flory designed they have the black rubber clutch and it's um, gold plating. Got the colored uh, backing card, which is definitely a must for every collector. The pins are just amazing, so um, can't go wrong with these. And uh, Vice Press was so nice to have like a bunch of sets so that they could all have like come together. You could all get the artwork with the pins or just the pins and then uh, particular artwork. So they had some cool offers definitely there. Yeah, now let's get over to the 1988 crazy for cult exhibition and this one is a very cool i i, I want to go over the website real, like a like look through real quick and then i will take a closer look for uh, some artwork that i really enjoyed and that i selected to show you 
and as you can see there's a lot of stuff going on there's still a lot of stuff available but uh, certain things already sold out as our main piece by George Gray that we uh, they're gonna, we're going to talk about later in detail and uh, yeah so if you haven't checked it out yet I would definitely go over there there's so even some open editions we're gonna cover as well and yeah that's some cool cool stuff that came out uh, by, by this crazy for cult exhibition so don't sleep on it try to get some cool artwork here and um, yeah um, let, let, let's jump into it, into what, we, uh, into what I picked for this show. The first one is by Mike Stiles and it's The Dark Crystal. It's a framed print, a custom painted frame as well. Uh, it's a digital illustration print and it's this in the size of 8 by 10 inches. It looks just amazing, even though you can see in the back here, like <laughs> this must be the office. <laughs> So you can see some, uh, some probably some some prints here in the back, but yeah, it's it's a really cool piece by Michael Styles, um, and it comes framed. I mean, what can you ask uh, more for? And if you're a Dark Crystal fan, I think there are a lot of fans out there. Very cool fantasy movie. Uh, enjoyed this one very much. But coming over to one of my favorite movies slash TV shows, it's What We Do in the Shadows. Is such good humor and right up my alley. And this is a digital print on heavyweight enhanced matte paper. It's 13 by 19 inches and it's an open edition. So you can get this one. It's still available. Grab one if you can. Um, the Beatles look here for the vampires. Very fitting, very funny. Loving this definitely. And if you had not enough of what we do in the shadows, this one is Poor Peter by Catherine Moore. It's oil on cradle wood panel. I think it's already sold out. And it's a 6 by 12 inch um painting yeah i think you have to call it painting in that regard it's not a print and yeah it looks it looks cool and uh, peter's character is just perfect it's so funny when he's always on like he doesn't have that much of uh, uh, like screen time but when he's there he's definitely seen still in that regard but i think one of uh, the most beautiful prints from that show is this one here by Dani Paraguteva. I hope I pronounced that right. It's Moonrise Kingdom print. It's a G-clay print. It's 12 by 12 inches as well. Uh, it is a signed and open edition. So definitely um, if you like Wes Anderson and all that, all that kind, you definitely should check that out. It's a very cool print and it's been like on a cover for um, the Crazy for Cold page as we just checked that out. And yeah, so go over there and grab one. That's, uh, that's a cool piece. And another cool piece is, I think it's still available as well, uh, The uh, by Jeffrey Everett. It's called It's So Metaphorical in Korean. It's the Korean version and there's also the, American, uh, the, 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 the English version. And it's a screen print, 18 by 24 inches. It's signed and numbered and only an edition of 30. And this one is really cool. I like it with like the house and everything. Like I mean, I like architecture stuff. So that's pretty cool stuff by Jeffrey Everett captures the whole uh the house which is an important part of that movie and uh yeah uh cool cool print definitely worth to be in that show and i have uh, one artist but two prints and uh we're gonna start off um with dan mumford this is the revenge is good for your health old boy uh, movie print it's a g clay print on archival paper 24 by 18 inches numbered in limited edition of 50 and it captures my favorite scene from that movie it's like the this hallway scene it's just amazing what a great movie uh also korean and uh yeah don't don't think about the remake by spike lee i'm sorry it's not, it's not maybe not spike lee's fault but this movie is just uh blech. but oh well it is what it is uh but this print is definitely not, uh, it looks very amazing and it reminds me of that scene which is very cool and uh, yeah, uh, there's some more. Dan Mumford also from um, Gallery 1988. Um, Your Warriors are good, real good. It's the Dusk variant. It's a timed release. I don't know if the time is up yet. I think it was uh, available for was it for two weeks, but I'm not sure. It's also G Clay print, 24 by 18 inches. And yeah, the edition size is... Um, is set upon when it's over and uh, then we'll we will probably know how many of them are available and it this is this is also a very cool movie and it captures uh, also one of the important scenes and i like love the colorways in that one and um yeah to have like the the skyline and this the the this kind of setting that is 
uh, the Warriors and makes it very clear uh, what this movie is about. And I really enjoyed the sprint. Did offer a good job on that one. And uh, yeah, so we're done now with talking about the releases for this week. And now let's come over to the main show, which will be George Gray, aka Rolson Designs, Back to the Future Triptych Skateboard Deck print, which is just amazing. And we might have some more in store in the future from that print. There's maybe some APs. I'm just going to put it out there. But we're going to talk to George now. So check this out. Okay, now we talked a lot of releases. And now up to the main liner here. This is George Gray, a.k.a. Rolls and Design. Welcome, George. How are you doing, my man? Not bad. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm a little bit exhausted from the heat, but uh, this weather is not my type of weather. I like a fair 25 <laughs> degrees Celsius. This is the weather for me. Cannot go higher. And uh, Yeah, it's like that over here. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the best. I mean, because I, I love, you know. I don't like t-shirts that much. I like to wear like like jackets or like a cool sweater. So it's like like over 25, it's way too hot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been wearing a lot of uh, looser fitting short sleeve yeah. t-shirts recently because the cotton t-shirts just get really hot in this weather. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to but, uh, break out my like floral print or like this is like, what is this? <laughs> this is koi print uh, um, uh, shirts yeah. like going into this Hawaiian tropical uh, direction. But yeah. <laughs> But yeah, since I already mentioned we are not here to talk shirts and uh, weather, let's. Uh, that's another podcast. <laughs> that's another podcast, exactly. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about your release with 1988. You came up with some really, really cool stuff, and it's for Back to the Future. You came up with a, a set of a triptych, um, basically, of the skateboard, and you put it on a skateboard. And yeah, I'm going to show thanks. this to all the people out there um, right now. They can see it. And I have to say, this is one of the best concepts I've ever seen for Back to the Future. And it's going to be hard to top for any artist out there. And especially since they're on a skateboard deck, it's even harder. So, but how how did this all happen? How did uh, how did you get in touch with 1988? Well, that's very kind of you. Um, they approached me, actually. I was... Uh, it all happened really quickly. I was just kind of minor way of business. Um, and then they emailed me out the blue. Um, what, was, what was funny is I, I saw their email with their icon of, of um, G1988. Yeah. And so I, I, I followed them for a while now and I, I know who they are. But I was really nervous to open the email. So I, I don't know why. I just didn't open it for like a day, a day or two maybe. And I told my partner about it and she was just like, do you want me to open the damn email? Like, you just read it. <laughs> so I opened it and read it, and they were like, yeah, we um, we really like your work, and we'd like you to um, to join the um, the Creative Occult uh, group exhibition that we're doing this year. Yeah. Um, and I was, yeah, I jumped at the chance. It's, I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah, who wouldn't? Massive problem. It's, yeah. And I mean, yeah. even you jumped on a chance and you knocked it out of the park. I, I have to say, I, there, there are a couple of very cool pieces. Uh, not everything is my taste, I have to say, but for the Crazy for Cult. But um, I, I definitely have to say it's like definitely top three pieces in this exhibition. So you definitely knocked it out of the park. But sadly, it's, it was just a one of one. Yeah, I, um, I was thinking, well, in an ideal world, I'd like to make more... Um, but because of the prices involved in getting it print, in getting the three mm -hmm. decks and getting them custom printed on the base, mm -hmm. I thought it'd be more special, especially being yeah. the 35th anniversary year, if I just made it a very simple one of one collection of three. Once it's gone, it's gone. Um, I might, I might release prints of each one yeah. separately. Um, but I'm yeah in in that sort of format. But I, I don't I don't really know yet. Um, Come on, man! You have to. You have to. Well, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll think I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Uh, I can't say I can't say anything. After, after this podcast, we're gonna peer pressure you into doing that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, how did you come up with the with with this idea? How, did, was it right away like the first thing you came up with, or was it like a longer working process on on getting there? It was a fairly long process. I started, I probably started working on it about two years ago. Um, I had the 
I had the idea I, I to get um often when I look for inspiration for new pieces of work, mm. I I flick through um photography. Mm -hmm. But I specifically look at photography from from all over the place and from interests that I have that aren't necessarily directly related to to movie art mm -hmm. or to um, to poster art. That way, the inspiration you get is often very different stylistically from what is already out there. Because if you just simply look at poster art and movie art to get inspiration for what you want to make, you end up just making something that's kind of like a Frankenstein of something else yeah. that's already out there. So I'm into... I'm into snowboarding and skating, and okay. so I often follow a lot of photographers um, in those industries, and I often look at um, look for them for inspiration because stylistically they're quite unique, especially with the classic fisheye lens sort of mm -hmm, um, yeah. shots. Um, I remember from my, my back in the days when I was watching skateboard yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah, they're really interesting perspective-wise. I'd quite like to take on that. Mm -hmm. um, Eventually. But I remember stumbling across some photos um, like this and thinking, oh, it would be quite cool if I could in some way adapt this for a movie poster idea. And obviously, I immediately thought of um, Back to the Future, which has the most obvious yeah. skateboard links, I suppose. Um, and then kind of put some ideas down for what it could look like and how it could look, um, focusing mainly on the kickflip Act, yeah. um, aspect as opposed to like the full body shot mm. and then it just evolved from there yeah yeah and um how how was it like because because i was like flipping through for the people to see uh and we looked at the details how how hard was it to get away with like the the nike mentioning the nike on there having the logo on the shoes and stuff like that how how was that for you i mean is that is that the problem or did like 1988 like regulate that um that was as far as I'm aware, not an issue. Um, the thing I tend to keep in mind is um, you have to take inspiration from um, something, not necessarily directly linking to it. And there are certain things, I think, that come within fair usage. And I believe, as far as I'm aware, using specific common pieces of clothing that they fall under fair usage mm -hmm. i may be i may be wrong <laughs> let's hope not <laughs> that regards um i hope not um but that's partly why i i didn't include faces or um yeah. anything recognizable from yeah like top likeness is always a problem yeah yeah that and that wasn't that wasn't my i didn't want to do that with the characters in it it was mainly focused on the the actual deck and the And the and the uh, the feet and the clothing. Yeah. Um, uh, how how hard was it for you to translate uh, the motion basically of the skateboard into this um, to to like to to get the idea of the trick here? Um, it was slightly tricky. Um, I I had a few. Um, I tried to collate a bunch of different images of uh, of photos of skateboarders doing kickflips and other tricks to see what a skateboard looks like where the light is how to make it look like you haven't seen the the deck separately the person separately and make it so it just looks a bit too flat mm -hmm. um, so that was slightly tricky and i had to adjust the angles every now and then um, what does help with the hoverboard aspect is because there are no wheels um, or trucks you can see, yeah. it's actually fairly easy to get the light right mm -hmm. and to make it look like it's in the right place. Um, yeah, it's just using lots of different sample photos to get to get the angles right, basically. Uh, how's your kickflip game? Uh, <laughs> not very good. I cruise around a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm still I'm still getting to grips with the kickflip, so I'll, oh, I'll let yeah. you know how that, okay. how that comes. Because I was wondering, because like uh, I, I know a couple artists who do uh, basically their own like shots, like to, to like recreate the idea, to so they can draw it digitally, for example. So I figured yeah. you might have done the kickflip yourself and then get this get this. I mean, there. that would have been ideal. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not that good, <laughs> unfortunately. But I do do that. I do do that. Um, I do do that sometimes, where I take pictures of my hands or mm. or myself in a specific position. Um, actually, I, th- I remember it coming up on Twitter um, at some point. It'll be really interesting to have an exhibition of photography of artists taking sample shots mm-hmm. of themselves for their art. Yep. Because you get it a lot in, especially with like comic book artists, yeah. if they want to get a really specific pose for a character. Mm. So I thought that would be quite, that might be quite funny, quite interesting. Yeah, uh, I remember because I was talking to Araceli Munoz a um, couple, couple of weeks back, I think it was. Um, and she also did for uh, Detective Pikachu, she did this shot where... Uh, the, the t- like Pikachu and uh, the guy like look in a hat and there's like a city on the side. And then um, she took a shot of herself like standing there and put like a, like a, I don't know, it was like a teddy bear or whatever she put on there, like taped it this way that it hold up like yeah. this. And then she took the photos <laughs> for reference on how it would look like. So that's kind of like, yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. And I asked her about the shot, but she sadly doesn't have the shot anymore. But that would be a very I great s- photo album, I think. Yeah. I still have them all on my phone because I usually just take them on my phone. Very good. Shoot them over to my email. Yeah, definitely just, keep them. Keep them. That's very important. I'll come back to that idea. We should. We should. We should work on that. Yeah, I'll. I'll make a. I'll make an exhibition of them maybe one day. Great. Um, coming back to your print, um, I was wondering because we were talking about like peer pressure and APs and. In what kind of way would you love to have the print um, be printed in, in that regard? Like paper, um, screen print, litho. What, do you, what I, would you? What's the choice? Usually, I usually go for um, Gicle. Mm-hmm. Um There's a couple of printers. There's a printer I like to use in Soho. I, I live in London, mm-hmm. um, and they're really, they're really good quality. Um, Soho Print Store. If anyone's interested. Mm-hmm. Um, so I probably go to them. They have a good section of different papers, um, and their printers are very high quality. But the the agreement I signed with the gallery was that everything has to be through them. Mm-hmm. So with regards to this particular piece, as of now, I I, I can't do anything. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I see. But may, maybe in the future, or maybe I or maybe I put it through the gallery again. Yeah. I'm not quite we, sure. we will pass. We will pass on 1988, so they will come to yes. you and ask for. Let's do prints. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um what what would what kind of dimension uh did you go out from because like when you look at the 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 triptych itself where it's not on a board and not shaped on as on a board yeah um what dimension did you or do you want to go for so these these are to the size of the um of the skateboards in question Mm -hmm. so what was it eight eight point two five inches uh wide and I can't remember that. I can't remember the length now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's an un- it's an unusual shape. But I did it specifically so it would fit on the uh, but it's, on the deck. But it's a regular s- skate deck, right? Yeah, they're regular. They're um, they're ooh, what are they? They're a concave um, regular deck. Mm-hmm. I initially wanted them to be on old school decks. Okay. Yeah. You know, once you like, you, you often see like pool skaters yeah. skating on. That's why the shape from the when you look at the yeah, triptych, it's which is from the the shape of the original film as well as the mock-ups that I made. Yeah. Um, however, last minute they didn't have any stock left, especially with like the uh, pandemic at the moment. Yeah. So I had to kind of settle with what um, with what was best. Mm-hmm. So the regular one but it, it still come out, came out pretty well so. yeah i mean uh, you, you sent me over the picture and i showed it just now it looks looks amazing on on the deck is yeah. and it, uh, i i still want to see it on a, on a on a paper but because that would probably look awesome as well and um what kind of dimension do you think there is it like is it going to be like an 18 by 36 or what, what? i imagine it'll be the same aspect ratio oh okay uh, maybe even to size that might be quite cool i mean i would just say um, I mean, it would also be cool if you would do the prince as a skate deck. That could also work, right? If I do a what, sorry? Uh, the, the prince as a skate deck, as like, you know? Oh, if I do them again yeah. as a deck. Yeah. Uh, be- yeah, I do quite like the idea, though, that the original triptych is a one of one. So okay. maybe if I altered it in a way and made a slight variation or variant mm-hmm. and, then put, and then put that on a deck. Um, yeah. 
I, I quite like the one of one. It makes it. It makes. It I mean, I mean, uh, no, no matter what. Uh, uh, being on a skate deck that's that's one on one as as it gets i'd say and because like for example um do you know the is it martin anson or somebody or somebody uh, did uh, for example dracula in a coffin like you know this this kind of style as a print they and they the people people oh, okay. people framed it actually in a coffin for example or um there was um Jason Ad Jason oh, Edmondson right. put out uh, Michael Myers, for example, in a certain uh, shape. So this this I think this could could also go really well with uh, with the skate deck, and, 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 like as a print, you know. Yeah, I've got a couple of ideas for a for a bunch of other um, okay uh, movie posters, maybe that use the same idea mm -hmm. of of being printed on something other than paper, yeah. or if it is on paper, it's in the shape of. Uh, of something relevant to the film. Yeah. So I was thinking of potentially doing um, a Jaws piece of art on a, a longboard or maybe a surfboard. Okay. Surfboard would be very big. Or a longboard would be a bit manageable. Or it but... could be like a float, like a donut float, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or a lilo maybe. Yeah. Or, uh... or the, the orca from top. Like yeah, that's first not a bad shout, though. Andy Fairhurst kind of... He did that? I did not know. Oh, it was either Andy Fairhurst or Sam Gilby. Yeah, he he's done a, a bird's eye view looking oh, down okay, on the yeah. orca. But having like the print actually be the orca. Yeah, that's that's, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's true. That's a little a little taking it a little further. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so um, yeah, we, I definitely can't wait if there's going to be a, a piece since I already mentioned multiple times now how great this print is and how great uh, the the idea I, is. I, I, I... I get, I get the, I get the hint. So, uh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but yeah, um, I wanted to do also a little movie review. I mean, it's a beloved movie, but is there something you really, really like uh, more than already mentioned, or is there something you don't like as well for the movie that didn't work? Um, let's not put which it... one. All three. Or... Um, you, you uh, we're gonna like rate all of them uh, in the end, all three together. But okay. um, you can go off of each single one, whatever you want. Uh, oh, it's just tough. Um, I like the third one a lot. Okay. And I know that it's usually seen as the worst one. Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> least favorite. But uh -huh. I've got a feeling it was maybe the... F it may have been the one I saw first. Okay. I mean, it may have not been the one I saw first, but it was the one I remember seeing a lot on TV when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And if it was on, I'd always watch it. Um, so, and I'm a big fan of westerns anyway. Okay. So I have a, I have a very, I do have a bit of a love for that third one. What's... So I, if I was going to rank them, I'd probably say third, first, second. Okay, okay, okay. I have to say, when it, when it comes to ranking, um, third is going to be third for me, but... Um... I like the beginning in uh, one and uh, two as well, but I don't like the endings. So it's like kind of hard to, you know, I don't like where it, where it sometimes where it, where it takes a turns, but I think one is overall the best, but closely followed by second. Yeah. I mean, one is such a tight film. Yeah. It's really, really good. Exactly. Um, it's, it's like a it's... one of one of your decks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, The ending was especially weird with the second mm -hmm. when it said we will uh, we will return with the third and it shows like a trailer. Yeah. I don't know how many times that's been done. Um, but I, I think that's like the only time I can ever think I can ever think of a trilogy kind of already showing you footage of the third film. Yeah, of well, the end of the Matrix maybe because they filmed it at the same time or Lord of the Rings. Do they have like a little teaser? I don't know. I don't no, remember. No. But... Lord of the Rings didn't, yeah. though they were all filmed at the same yeah. time. That's like I think that's yeah. the only chance where you can get those kind of stuff, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there was a reason for it, yeah. but yeah, it was definitely a bit odd. Yeah. Um. But how would you rate uh, the whole trilogy, like from zero to ten? Um. I mean, they're bona fide classics. <laughs> they are. First one, I, first one, as I said, is is solid film. Second one is good, and I have such a soft soft spot for the third one i think you're probably going to have to give it uh, a nine out of ten i'd say for the for the trilogy yeah for the trilogy. for the trilogy yeah fair enough uh i i would have to go with uh, uh eight 
8.5 maybe but i think that's okay. my because um because the third one for me um I'm, i'm not as a big western fan as you are but uh so i think that's that's why it didn't work that much for me but still 8.5 or is good enough for every movie out there and um a question here then what's your favorite western movie uh for me it's um for a few dollars more oh okay which is yeah the second film in the um in the dollars trilogy yeah um I I love that film so much. I could talk about it for hours. Did you um I didn't check yet. I didn't check yet, but uh, did you do a print for that already? Like a fan like tribute print? I've have I done one? I don't actually think I have. Come on, George. How can you leave that out? I I made <laughs> yeah, I know. I made a, um I made a quick little thing um where I recast uh Keanu Reeves as um the man with no name yeah so him rather than clint eastwood okay yeah. and then did a poster for um fist for the dollars and i think for a few dollars more actually and it was who did i cast as lee van cleef i think it was adam driver well, that's a that's a good cast uh, can reese adam driver John, come on man yeah, so uh, keanu reese adam driver which i think would work Well, I mean, I'd see that film any day. Yeah, come on. I, I, even I would watch it, even though I'm not that maybe, big of a Western fan. Yeah. But like those two, come on, they're great, great actors. Yeah, maybe I do a proper, a proper um, poster for, um, for a few dollars more. Yeah, should probably do that or a trilogy. Maybe another triptych. That's that's what I, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what what else is coming up next? Do you have anything in the pipeline that we have to look out for? Uh, I've got a couple of things in the pipeline that I can't talk about yet, mm. but you'll hear about them and see them soon. All right. So one one piece you'll see, uh, I think maybe next in, in the next couple of okay, weeks, cool. and then I've got something else coming out in September, mm -hmm. um, early September. So yeah, I can't quite talk about those things yet, but. I'm quite excited for for them. Great, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Is is it going to be? Can you say at least a gallery, or is it also NDA? It'll be, it'll be through um, Gallery 1968. Oh, that's great. Sounds good. Yeah. Looking forward for that. Um, George, thank you so much for your time, and everybody out there, visit George on his Instagram profile, Twitter profile, wherever he is. Royalston Design. He's on there. He will get back at you and he always does great art. I love his style and what he did. And this piece, as I mentioned multiple times now, as, I'm sorry I have to say it so much, but it is just that great. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Very kind. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.